Back today to talk about the Gold Cup semifinal between USA and Canada. Uh, pitch conditions were atrocious. The game should not have gone ahead, but you, you know what? It did. So let's talk about what did happen. Folks are also going to say, you know, there's no point reading anything into this game. And I agree with that tactically. That all went out the window as soon as, uh, as, soon as we saw the pitch conditions. But individual players had to deal with a lot of adversity this game. And to be successful, you really had to adapt your style of play. So I want to look at this game through that lens and, and see what it tells us about individual players. So this first clip, I want to begin just by looking at field conditions. Um, Sheridan had a difficult time with that ball. I and mean, then you see the only way it's making progress, right, is when it's getting popped up in the air. Try and pass it on the ground here. It goes nowhere, so they instantly flick it back up. And it's just become this game of, of kick and chase. Even clearing it out, right, you have to take a different approach. So yeah, it's all over the place, not moving nicely. We've got some really horrible patches of standing water here. And then another thing I notice is just a lot of players did not have the correct boots for this game. Uh, the players that play in Europe seemed a little bit more prepared with the metal studs, but you know this is a really difficult game to come out and not have the appropriate footwear for. So I, you know everybody started this game in a hole. This was going to be a slog. It's not pretty football, but it's it's kick and chase, and it is what it is. So this next clip, it's 20 minutes in, so folks should have really had a bit of time to adjust, settle into the game, and get a feel for the pitch conditions. So this is the Shaw girl goal, and I want to pay attention to what Alex Morgan is doing because the way she calls for the ball, she's not just calling for it to Shaw, she's calling for it chipped up in the air. She wants Shaw to have that 50-50 ball, and then a great press, good little goal to slide that in. I want to take another look. So the press here from Jaden, right? She doesn't win that ball. She's just following it until she sees the bad touch. It's very disciplined to just continue the run, even if you know that ball's about to get booted away by the keeper. And it's really what wins them the goal here, nice and early on. It was a great start for US. Uh, so in a, in a really choppy game like this, what can we control? And set pieces become really, really important. It's one of the only situations where you know you're going to be able to play the ball in the box. You know you're going to have an opportunity. So uh, taking set pieces, defending set pieces, both really critical for this game. Canada looked very threatening multiple times. Great clearance from Davidson. And I want to take a moment just to pay attention to the clearance. We'll watch it again. Because, right, this is what I said about adaptability. You don't typically want to just boot the ball out as far as you can. That's not considered a good clearance. You're looking to retain possession. You're looking to move the ball up. But in this case, we can't risk it. We just have to get it out. And look how much this ball bounces. Look how much time gets eaten off this clock and how completely reset this defense gets. So that's the kind of stuff we want to do. Things that maybe typically wouldn't be good, but on a day like this, makes more sense. Um, Getting towards halftime here, just a little play from Alex Morgan that I wanted to pay attention to. I think she's been playing a very different role to what we typically see her do. Um, so I just want to watch how she's creating opportunities for other players. You know, really holding things up with her back turned, staying high. And then this touch here is nice. Just, just moving the ball into space quickly. That's what we see her doing. Her back's going to be turned to goal. And she's going to move the ball into space quickly. And she made plays like this all night, all through the quarterfinal game. Very consistent with that. All right, so a little bit after halftime, and we had two changes that I think were very important at halftime. Nicewanger came out for Kruger, and I think that was very, very important. Uh, you know, Nicewanger was having an okay game, but with the lead, I think they really, really needed somebody more defensive-minded, and I think Kruger did a great job at just, you know, doing what was asked of her and booting that ball away. Um, you know, it didn't look flashy, but it got the job done. Excellent. And then the other change was uh, Lynn Williams came in and Jaden Shaw went out. That made a lot of sense to me because they'd had Jaden Shaw playing at, you know, really, really crazy high intensity. And, you know, Lynn's a really fantastic runner, really, really fast. So for a game that's just kick and chase, perfect type of player you want out there. So 
Um, I really, really liked those two changes. We're going to see the impact that Lynn has on the game here. Again, just chasing. That's nothing other than chasing a ball down. Again, just chasing it. Play it back in. And there you go, creating something out of, of something that didn't look like a whole lot. Uh, this touch here, right, the defender is actually going to boot this away. But even if, even if she didn't, this is a very similar touch to what I would want to see Lynn take. You're not looking to dribble the ball close to your body in this type of game because that's when the ball is going to hit a puddle and then you're going to overrun it. So what you really want to do is actually kick it out pretty far in front of you and then go chase it. So this touch is, is kind of what you would have wanted Lynn to do anyway. So yeah, nice little sequence there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, again, towards the end of the game, and this is the goal. And, you know, the difficulty here was the, the intensity from Canada just ramped up so much. The last 10 minutes, they were playing with so much urgency, and the U.S. just looked like they're in desperation mode constantly. So uh, I want you all to pay attention to Emily Fox, what she's doing over here. She had a very nice game, uh, but this goal, you could say, you know, she had some some fault there possibly. So let's see, pursuing nicely. And then her and Coffee kind of get doubled up. Emily has to, to track back. She's a little too late. Nair's kind of caught going the wrong direction. Um, so there's a, there's a couple breakdowns there. But what I really want to pay attention to is the situation with Sam Coffee. Uh, so I think Fox is doing the right thing here, tracking her player. She's going to follow them. And actually, let's go back because Heidema is, is very smart and she sees, right, that Fox on the outside is, is taken out of the play. And as soon as she sees that that space is open over here, she's really going to dart in there. There, she just goes, whoop. And yeah, track it back, too late. But I don't know if this is Emily Fox's fault. And I say that because once she's in this position, we have coffee here, we have Fox in here. You never want to see this this happening this close. You don't want to see it happening, period, but you especially don't want to see it happening in your own um, defensive third. And it's because you've just, you're wasting two players covering one player. So I think what is supposed to happen is either, either Fox is allowed to continue pursuing her player and coffee is supposed to drop in here and cover, or Fox is supposed to drop back and Coffee is supposed to pick up this coverage here. Either way, somebody needs to communicate that and you know, typically this midfielder is going to be giving directions much more than the outside back. So I think it's on Coffee in this position to say, hey, you need to get back to your mark right now. And it's, it's not long, right? It's a second, but a second makes a big difference and it just costs, costs that goal you can see. Fox is down real low while Heidem is getting up. You know, Fox is caught trying to change direction while Heidem is getting up, and then Nair is caught going one way and has to go back the other way. It's really not pretty. Um, and I don't really know whose fault it is, but Coffee was subbed out for Sonnet about three minutes later, so I suspect, um, I suspect the coaching staff were a little unhappy with something they saw there. All right, so we are now in extra time. And this is just a little clip I wanted to show because I said earlier about players having the wrong studs. And when you see this really make a difference is on the planting foot. And so, you know, this player has on firm ground studs and she's just going to completely eat it here because of the studs. <laughs> Can get much more of it than that, but I mean, it is not pretty. It's not pretty, and that's why I was very concerned about this game going to penalties in particular because, you know, it's really just a toss-up. Nobody's going to be able to give it their best shot because you cannot miss the goal frame in a penalty. They have to put it on target, and so if you want to make sure you don't slip and kick the ball wide or high, yeah, it's a little tricky. Uh, 97th minute here, two subs that I haven't spoken about yet. Rose Lavelle came on for Alex Morgan. And Sophia Smith came in for Trinity Rodman. And so we're going to see them link up here. 
what I actually want you to pay attention to, even though this is a Sophia Smith goal, is have a look at how Rose is positioning herself and what she's doing. And then once she does play the ball off her head, just kind of kind of watch how some of the steam comes out of the ball. So she's getting her back turned, getting up very high, getting her back turned, and then one touch, pop on header, and look at how that ball just stops. So take a look at it again, because the thing I want to point out with Rose here, she comes in for Alex, and I think the coaching staff has her do almost exactly the same role. Play very high, play with your back turned, and let's get that ball into space on one touch. And so I think the coaching staff at this point is really looking for somebody to follow directions, follow instructions, and play the way we want you to play. So yeah, I think it's very interesting to see uh, you know, this isn't a very typical Rose play for me. And then the goal from Sophia Smith, it's a good goal. Uh, but the one thing I will say is this has to be a goal. Sheridan is, is pretty deep back here. Smith has a decent amount of time and space. Um, you know, if this isn't a goal, I question how many months it is before we see her in an American jersey again. Um, so. You know, I think she's had a case of the yips. Maybe this is enough to get her over it. It wasn't a fantastic game all around, but that is a very good goal. That is a very controlled goal. Okay, so we're here about 15 minutes later, uh, deep in extra time, and the U.S. Is, is trying to get this game closed out. And so now this is just turning into game management, clock management, wasting time, and just doing anything you can to keep that ball out of your defensive third. Now this clip I pulled because I just question what Sophia Smith is doing here. I understand that the pitch conditions are still causing problems, but you know, why is she dribbling? Where is she going? Is she going to the side? Is she going to the corner? I don't really know. And then the physicality here, I just, I don't really see her try to get her butt out, her hips out, anything. And my complaint with that is Sophia Smith has played 51 minutes of football at this point. She is paired with someone that has played almost two hours. So you have a real opportunity to be a little physical, make their life a little difficult, and just, just take five, ten seconds off the clock and make your life a little bit easier. And then over here, the ball is going to come back to her, and it's not that same disciplined press we saw from Jaden Shaw. It's kind of lollygagging, a little bit of a reactionary chase. This kind of looks like I'm chasing the ball because I've been told to, but I really don't want to. You know? That doesn't strike fear into me. That doesn't make me feel like I need to play this ball faster. So here we are. Only one minute. One minute of added time. One minute to close this out. And the last 10 minutes have just been furious, right? The ball is ping-ponging back and forth. And this looks scary. This looks scary. Really nice clearance from Kruger, though. This is what I said about her just sitting back and getting the job done. And here we go. Looking at this right here. Actually, let's not even do that. It's a little unfair. Looking at this right here. What do you think our chances are to win this game? We have 30 seconds of time. This is the last defender, and we have an entire half of the pitch to use. So if I'm one of the defenders back here, I am going, thank the Lord, this is the best thing ever. We are about to close this game out and win it. And I just am so confused as to the decision making here. This touch with the knee, uh, we see Sophia Smith take this a lot, right? She does this all the time in club play. She's dribbling in stride, controls the ball in stride, and moves forward with it. But we know this isn't a game to dribble. We know this isn't a game to dribble. Why not just pop this ball up over the head? Why not just kick it into space here and chase it? We're very, very lucky that this ball was even allowed to bounce. I don't get it. And to me, this is the first in a chain of events that causes serious problems for the U.S. 
Nair is now desperate, makes a bad read, and we end up in this situation. So, you know, I really think the U.S. were lucky to walk away with the win here. I think they really struggled to close the game out in key moments, and it's a little bit worrying seeing such an important game left to chance. And, yeah, we, we can all be up in arms about this. Everybody is upset about this contact. Um, we just should not have let it get to that point. So I spoke at the beginning of this video about adaptability, and I think some players modified their game really well. I think Corbin Albert played so much of her game in the air, uh, essentially just juggling the ball, and did what she had to do to get the ball played. I think Gurma and Davidson, who are usually very possession-focused backs, were just real smart and just got that ball out of play as much as they needed to. And then two players that I think kind of struggled, um, similar players, Sophia Smith and, to a lesser extent, Trinity Rodman, who I think just really struggled to change their style of, of dribbling the ball close to their feet, and just they did not look as effective this game. So, you know, I don't think Alex Morgan and Sophia Smith are competing for the same roster spot. I just don't think that's true. But I think the U.S. coaching staff is probably looking for one of two types of forwards, uh, the player that is insanely talented, has such incredible ball skill and just phenomenal. You can't leave them off the roster no matter, even if you're not sure what you're going to do with them, they're just too talented to leave behind. And I think your second option is somebody that is going to listen to your instructions and deliver the kind of performance that you are asking from them. So I don't know if Sophia Smith slots into one of those two spots right now. I think Jaden Shaw looks really on form and could maybe be the first type of player. And I think Alex Morgan looks like she's really willing to adapt her game and do what's asked of her and is willing to be the second type of player. So I think we have a couple months left to see if Sophia Smith is going to have some sort of change in mentality or whatever it is that's going on and help her pull something out of the bag. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. Um, Appreciate you leaving a comment. If you've got any sort of video you do want to watch, um, I saw the request for something on Alyssa Thompson, which I'm really, really excited to put together because I think she's a phenomenally skilled player and a really, really exciting prospect coming out of the U.S. So thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you soon to recap the, the final.